Welcome to the second installment of Forgotten Colonies. This is not finished yet, but it is a start. And the fun part is, it's actually us who's gonna finish it. This map has four islands, Skull Rock. And Skull Rock is a relatively dormant volcano. And it has some green grass as well. well then the second island is gonna be your primary island. And this is called the Marble Quarry. And it's a really important island, actually one of the most important islands, because this is the island you have to defend. As you know, Forgotten Colonies, you know that the nether is closed. There are simply no portals left in the world, and the portals that are being created actually don't work anymore. They don't connect to the nether anymore. So, everything that comes from the nether is incredibly rare. Now, by accident, there is a massive quartz quarry right here. On this island controlled by the Sassaran Empire and they are not gonna let go of that quartz because that just skyrocketed since the nether is gone also this castle is made primarily out of quartz really dangerous now the quartz quarry and the skull rock they are actually living in this area so they will normally they pretty much fight with each other but this time they will band together to fight the invaders and they are going to land on those two islands over there. So it's a two versus two game. It's really interesting. And they pretty much score by trying to get the quartz from there. So since it's a pirate faction. Of course we have a pirate team song. Now I've set up a few things. We have the Teutonic Vanguard and the Teutonic Navy. They're going to be the attack team, and then we have the Sassarin Quarry Guards and the Sassarin Skull Crushers. They are going to be the pirates that are going to defend their own treasure. Well, one of them is pretty much a pirate faction, the other one is a pirate faction, but really settled on that specific island. We are currently on a spigot server, a paper spigot server even. So that's basically vanilla for every player, but there's going to be pretty of mods and plugins server side. So this is the team selection part. I love working with these pressure plates and why? Because if I would place a button and somebody would be standing close to it, usually the command blocks will fail as it will, for example, transfer the player who is closer to the button because a button you can actually press from a long distance already. And with pressure plates, you stand on it, you trigger it. And even if someone else is gonna stand on it while you're standing on it, it's not gonna work because the pressure plate is still indent in the floor that's why i love pressure plates so that's the team setup flags are really easy to make if i have a command block i've set them apart actually i simply have a set block uh, one position above it a red banner rotation four which is just the side it's facing and then a pattern and we use the pattern global color zero which is color white, white actually because that one can't be created by players of course I like using the command, but if you don't, you can easily take a plugin if you want to use a plugin slot for specifically DAR to make a color sign plugin. So the plugin is called Color Signs. You pretty much do it like this test, and it becomes blue. The thing I hate about this is that drawing the color, so pretty much doing this, is using already slots from the length so you actually can put less on a sign with a plugin than without so using a command is for me much more useful test sign it is absolutely unfathomable for me who always uses commands that we use a plugin for that if you want to set it to block and you actually look at the location you see it automatically wants to fill in not the position you are but the position you are pointing at so it's already looking at the sign well, we'll say Minecraft oak wall sign facing is south, so it's facing my way. And then we still have the brackets, of course, and in the brackets you'll put the text. So we don't want to put anything on the first row, so we already go for the second row. And then you really have to focus because it's actually using this format. This would make sense, and it actually takes it, but for a wall sign it will not work if you don't put this next to it. If you don't encapsulate the brackets. So, basically, we have the format set up, and we basically say text, test, color, red. 
And then we go to the other one, text, sign, color, white. And this does exactly the same as the plugin can. For me, it's more sense because now I have the commands copied. Could not set the block because I should have said destroy. After you've done it a few times, it's so much easier to make signs that way and you don't need the extra plugin. But in case you want to use a plugin, colored signs is the way to color signs. If you want to change the metadata of a sign, you actually have to target the metadata of that sign and not the block itself. Data merge, block, and then you don't use the whole block, but you actually only use the metadata. And if we do sign two, see? So that's the other way to do it. You can just, if there's already a sign, you can use a data merge actually to change the text as well, which is a little bit different, but for me, it makes sense. And don't forget, you always automatically have the chords you're looking at. So that's absolutely amazing. If I would have to do the chords again, it's always the chords I'm looking at. So I know it's going to be that block. Data merge is a bit more advanced than set block. Data merge will target the data of a block, while set block will, of course, put a new block. So you will always use data merge if you want to, for example, change the text on a sign dynamically in any way. The next plugin you're really going to need is World Guard. And World Guard is incredibly essential because you want to make sure that some areas are protected. For example, let's make a selection around this temple. I'm just going to make a quick sphere. And then I'm going to undo it. Now, I want them not to be able to harm this place. Or not yet, at least. Now, if I would quickly do a wall, you'll see it's going to be this area. We have the selection now. As you type region, you see region has several flags. What we want is actually region define. And let's give it a world name first. And then just call it temple. So you see a new region has been made called temple. And the world name in front of it. If you then look for info in that region, you'll see it has no flags. But world card comes with this great thing that you can actually just select them here. So make sure we can't PvP there. And we set that. Uh, we can't put things on fire, we can't place or destroy vehicles, we can't TNT. Now, the region is already protected, so this is already set, so you shouldn't use the first full ones at all. Let's go to the next page. You can't use creepers on there, you can't do mob damage. So we pretty much took all the things that made my harm this temple. This temple is a sacred place, you can't harm it anywhere there. So that can also count as a safe haven. For example, for the team, the poor poor team that is living below here. If they can respawn in the temple, for example, they can have a safe place to spawn without having to worry about being murdered right away. Now, if you look deeper into the flags, you can actually say a title. And a title is really interesting because then you can say the place you stand upon is sacred. And as you can see, if you enter this area now, you will see the message, the place you stand upon is sacred. Now that is a title. A title is not always something you want. So let's unset it for now and just make it a simple greeting. The place you enter is sacred ground. And now when you come closer, you see it in the chat, which is much less well, invasive. And we can say leaving sacred ground. Now if we enter and we leave again, you'll see the enter and leave message. So absolutely amazing. You can even set the game mode for specific areas, which is really interesting. So then we have our first area set. And if you go to just type region list, I think, you see that we actually have a second region here as well. Now, the greatest thing you can imagine is when you do region select, and then you take the FKS as a one AO2 temple, then you automatically have everything selected in this region. As you can see, if I do walls, they are instantly placed there. I am aware of the name. Now, if you, of course, look at the temple flags right now, you see all these flags have been set by us. Region remove is now removed and we can actually region 
define again and we can name it pretty much the same as the other one we have. And that was the last time we saw the flag because the flag has been unset as well. Anyway, we have this area. It's not protected now, of course, because we canceled that after we renamed it. But at least if we go into that region now and we do region list, you'll see it now has a name similar to the parent name. And the field is actually the largest one. So if we do region select field and we do region info, you'll see it has an insane amount and it also has from 0 to 255 so it covers the whole area and for example what you can do is region set parent if we want to make the filter parent from the temple you see now actually perfectly parented so the field is now the parent and the temple is the child and that means pretty much that every key I set in the field will automatically apply to the child unless the child has a different key, which is really ideal actually. Now then I'm going to quickly create another sphere. I'll pretty much do it like that and I'll instantly undo it so the sphere is gone. And I'll go to the other side and I'll do the sphere again. And I'll do the right click and I do the undo again. If I now do expand vertical, then it's expanded from top to bottom. So if we do region define and we call this, what, let's call it island Cesarin quarry and we would do region info and we'll select this one. You'll see this one actually extends from 0 to 255 as well. And this way you don't have to dig all the way down to go to the zero point to make a selection, but just vertical and you can actually give that an amount as well. So now we have this island defined as well. So if we go to the temple, logically, we should see that it has three regions now. Region info. And indeed it has the island Sestrin quarry and it has the temple and it has the field. So this is world guard for you. And later we will assign teams to certain regions which are in a way protected or have more things they can do on that island than others. In a sense of they can build, but when the enemy can, they can destroy, but they cannot build. Meaning that, for example, walls will have much more value, but they might need TNT or something to get through. But that's of later care. Now, we have the quarry guard and we have the island for it. Next thing, of course, we want is we want the person who enters this team will be a member of that region. Now, below the pressure plates, we have a start of command blocks. We also have the pirate team song here. The command blocks are currently facing down and you're better off than actually making them face sideways. So we'll do region add owner and we actually add the world name which is optional but it's because we use multiple worlds I actually do that extra flag and it's pretty much what you if you ever worked with Linux etc you know how to assign extra flags to something. So then we'll actually take the region island Cesarin quarry. And then lastly, it already asks for the thing, so you actually give it the player. Now, if you're the only player, it, you can just fill in the name, but of course we're not. We're going to have a server full of people, and um, so you want to use player. There is one massive problem we're having right now. If I would step on this thingy, fail to add new owners, and that is because at P is not a player. It's not a player name. It, it's, it even has a disallowed character. And world card doesn't accept it in a way however if i would take that same command and i would type it in chat you'll see it already gives an error as well because world guard simply doesn't know what at p means it doesn't understand it it wants the player name now there's one fix for that and that's a little plugin called pseudo if i would take the same command and i would add pseudo in front of it pseudo will actually translate the string first and we'll actually use all the at p at s at a everything it will translate it into either an array or a player name so pseudo is a really incredibly powerful tool to use if we do with this now updated the island sesterin with the new owners perfectly so if we check now reaper iru has been added as a new owner so that works perfectly so that's the third so the current plugins we're having is color signs which is highly optional to make the color signs and then we have a world card of course to make the areas and then we have pseudo 
Pseudo is absolutely powerful and is one of the best plugins you can imagine. So Pseudo is basically used as a bridge to communicate with other plugins that don't use the standard nominators like at P, at A, at S. And it actually changes the string and then outputs the command to Minecraft. Now, as you can see, the floor is littered with sand. And that's not really good. And that's why we're gonna need another plugin called lag clear or clear lag actually. The thing you type is lag clear. If you do lag, you'll see a bunch of commands and you can say, for example, lag area and you can say 50. That will remove everything in a radius of 50. And with lag, you can do a lot. For example, lag kill mobs, gone. And of course you can also see lag chunk. Clear lag will give you a massive overview on everything that's really heavy on your server. As you can see, there's only a few entities in the worst places now, so the server is absolutely healthy right now. Lag admin. Now the admin can start a lot of modules. So if we start the clear task, as you can see, it's grayed out. Then it's enabled now. And this should automatically start clearing it. You might wanna check what it does. We personally also use a ban item, which is fairly optional. You can have several ways to ban items, but for example, we ban bets. If you want to use add, you'll see it has several options. It will ban the item in your hand, but you can give it extra options. You cannot place bets. As you can see, the item against the bet is now successfully banned for world FK as 01 A02. Now, of course, you have to do that for every item you want banned and it works perfectly. It's it's very good. It's a very good plugin. This way, if you want to set up your mini game, you are sure that all the items that might spoil or that might give cause of cheating or give ways to cheat are actually out of the world and banned for good. As you can see in the chat, I have no colors in front of my name, after my name, nothing. It's actually a long lasting issue with Bucket that the chat is reset. If you want to use the vanilla scoreboard teams, in buckets, so that includes Spigot, buckets completely removes all prefixes and colors and even suffixes. So it's not really an addition, it's more a fix to bucket itself. And since Spigot is bucket, we need to fix the chat. Now, if I go to my other world, and we'll get to MVTP in a minute, and I'll type here, you'll see also it's white. Now, if I would join a team, and I would now type, you'll see my name is green. And that is one of the primary things. Of course, the world name will still stay white, but I can also add a suffix. Team modify green, which are the director actually. Prefix text le grand color aqua. Test. So as you can see, this works perfectly. Now we're gonna use teams later as well. But for now, you can see the prefix is perfectly set. You can just type Legrand. Yeah, it's even white. But it also accepts the JSON, of course. And you really have to learn that JSON, by the way, because it's really important. Same counts for suffix, of course. I don't have to give that example. So that's basically what it fixes. There's another plugin we tried. And I don't know if you can still download it. Probably can. I'll put the link in the description, of course, if I find it. Easy map reset would be a place where you can reset maps to a previous snapshot as soon as the server restarts. In combination with Moseverse, and maybe I'm going a little bit ahead of myself then, you can load and unload certain worlds. For example, if I check my list, at the end is unloaded, and normally when I restart a server, FK, S01, AO2 is always unloaded as well. So that basically means they don't use resources and you can't teleport to it, which is perfect. If a world unloads, the idea was the match is done, everybody gets teleported to the main hub, and then we reload the world, or we unload the world actually, then Easy Map Reset will have in his config, like, oh, I have to reset this to a previous snapshot. We're still working on it. We're not really done with it, but it should work like that perfectly. Or you can just restart the server after a match is done, of course. But then you need a specific hub. You need an external server as a hub, of course. And then you're talking about bungee cord servers. But basically it works like that. You open the server, the people play their mini game, and when they get out, easy map reset 
will just switch it back to an old snapshot and the world is pretty much fully reset. That's basically how we're going to use Easy Map Reset and it, it can work with Multiverse. Now, since we're talking about Multiverse, of course, we let's go to MVTP World. So here we have the hub, just a simple hub we just built. And of course, through this hub, you can go to the different game worlds. If they are, of course, loaded. And you can go back to the world. We have tried multiple things actually to reset maps and we have other things set up here as well but that's really dangerous especially if you have a very small arena you could use a little different way um, and here we actually use pseudo 4 as well. We select the world, we do position 1, position 2 which is basically simulating the wand and then we do restore. And basically we set up several chunks and every so now and then we'll emit a title. It works in a way but it had a lot of issues on its own. It, it took a while and we had several corrupted things after all. So you could do it if you have a very small arena it would be best to use actually the restore of world edit but for any larger maps and really think about a map 50 by 50 or larger you will not want to use that at all. Now, if anyone would have a Spigot plugin that has the power to take a 800 by 800 map and restore it to a previous snapshot on a very flawless way and preferably with an in-game command, that would be so welcome. Now, needlessly to say, we use Multiverse. And Multiverse is one of the best plugins around. For example, a few days ago, I made a super flat single player world. I copied the map to my server and then you simply import it just like that. Now Multiverse allows you to create a world extremely easy. For example, test world, and we're gonna make that normal. It doesn't give any tips, which is kind of annoying, but after you wait a little bit, you'll see it now show up in the list. You can then simply TP to your new test world. Now, if you would MV unload, you get moved to the spawn and then you'll see test worlds unloaded. And then we have multiverse portals and we'll use that pretty much here. If you want a portal, you just simulate any form of portal. There you go, this is going to be a portal. And the command's MVP, but you can also change your thing to actually to a wand. And that's only if you don't have world edit. Because we have world edit, we don't have to do that. So basically, if you have world edit, just make the selection like you would on world edit. We'll just create a portal and we'll just give it a name. And normally you assign here, for example, you say the world you want to portal to, but we don't do that yet. We'll just create one portal. And then we're actually gonna MVTP because the portal isn't been set yet. Now, if you would just say the world, it would probably go here because this is a spawn. But I kind of want to make a portal here as well because we already have this beautiful portal here, of course. So we're just going to make a selection of this portal as well. And we're just going to call it portal from. And now we're simply going to connect those two portals. And then we just link it to the other portal. Now if we would go through now, there we go. Well, we also have multiverse inventories, of course, which basically means every map you're in preserves their own inventories. And everything needs, of course, multiverse core. And lastly, we have Multiverse Sign Portals. Currently not using it as well, but will in the future because we want to do the spawn with signs. It's super easy. Signs only have one function, MV in the top world worlds. Right click, there you go. It works so well. Um, basically what you should know about that is W is a world. And P is a portal. Problem is, of course, now it doesn't fit. So you must make sure that your names are not too long as well. Now, needlessly to say, we use World Edit, and with that, World Edit Visualizer. World Edit has commands, of course, with double slash, cut, and paste. And the visualizer shows it up to a certain amount of blocks. There's, I've seen better visualizers, definitely, but we'll use this one <laughs> for now. You can also do without visualizer, of course. It just helps a little bit 
seeing what your selection is. It's actually more than you actually need, but this is the plugins we're gonna use and we might fall back. So make sure you got pseudo at least. Uh, we also had name tag edit, which we might use. I'm not sure yet. I saw it, it was really interesting uh, how amazing that was. But I wanna test that later a little bit when I see some other people. So that's basically the plugins. So make sure you have all those plugins ready and that's gonna help us create a beautiful, 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 beautiful mini game in the next episodes. Since we have the owner added, we know this guy is actually in the team and we're actually gonna make sure we have at least some stuff done there. Now I say, let's make a green one, conditional. And let's say title, all, title. So the title has multiple things, but we're gonna use the title itself. If you remember what I said about pseudo, this also works with selector. Selector is a special thing you can use. And if you say, for example, player, it will actually displace the player name. And let's give this a beautiful color as well. For example, color red, because we have the red team, of course. So we set a title, which just mentions the player name. So what will happen when we step on this platform? Yes, that's a name in red, beautiful. So that's exactly what we want. And then we're gonna use the team function. There are five teams already. That's actually teams of the other world. So we're not gonna use that. So we're gonna do team add. Team add says guards, tech says ring guards, quarry guards. That's our team. Create a team, says ring quarry guards. Now we want this team join, says guard, for of course the player. So the player is gonna join that card and we'll put it on conditional. Scoreboard, objectives, list. We've been playing on multiple things, so there's going to be an insane amount of scoreboard objectives already. But we have one scoreboard objective that's called in team. What we want to do is we want to number each team. And we do that to let the system know in which team they are. Because it's much easier to work with numbers than actually with names. So the command's going to look something like this. Now we want to give the teams a number and we're going to do that so we can use it on the scoreboard later. So we're going to make this team one, we're going to make this team two, and the player is never going to see that. But for us, we want to make sure that we have this settled for us so we can use it later for scoreboard commands. So the red ones are team three actually. And now we're going to add another chain, conditional, and we say, hey, this player is going to be in team three for the scoreboard. Now, why I did this like this, I'm gonna show you. We know they live there in that island. So let's see, where do we want them to spawn? Shall they spawn in the throne room? Sure. They'll spawn here in the throne room. I'll just set a position so I remember it myself. So let's add another chain. I'm basically gonna say, Execute if score player in team matches three run spawn point player and then the courts. Now we already set the spawn point as well for the player. So that's absolutely ideal. So then we're going to add a subtitle. I'm not going to really say how because I've already showed you multiple times. But we basically say it's going to have a text joins there with the color white. Then we add another text. And if we have multiple text, we always use the brackets around it. And we'll just separate them with a comma. And we'll do multiple text so we can give multiple parts of the text in a different color. So we basically say joins the Cesaron Garch team and we'll add that as well. So let's give this all a little test. Yes, Reaper Iro joins the Cesaron Garch team. Now if I would show the scoreboard, set display, sidebar, in team, you'll see that I'm in team three. There are still some players that are in teams and of course we're gonna clear them later. That's from previous games and we're gonna make sure they are cleared as soon as the game begins. Now, all these commands overwrite the other commands except the first one, add owner. We have to make sure that if the player switches multiple times, he doesn't become owner of all the things. Basically, we're going to remove the ownership of all the other places. So first we do remove owner of the Teutonic Navy. And then we're going to remove owner of the Teutonic Vanguard. 
and then we're gonna use of course the last island which is skull rock mountain and put them all on conditional there we go now you always want to check the last one and you'll see indeed updated with the new owners that means he actually got there all the way so everything has a previous output which is great that means everything worked perfectly if we check the region list i will check the skull rock mountain i should definitely not be owner i should be owner of the assessor and query and that's actually right so he's going to remove always and that's going to be important of course if all teams are set up and they will be soon enough so this is the team part i'm going to show you and next time we're actually going to start the game on a very basic level and teleport the players to the spawn points so and of course do some of the scoreboards as well thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video